The upsets are a part of this game, as are robberies, unfortunately. It's if Lawrence Akoli could make Bantam weight, he would be <laughs> huge, <laughs> Undisputed huge. Yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, four yeah, fights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making um, weight was just becoming impossible. The night's going to be a very, very hectic night. I think that, you know, um, the whole of Poland is going to want to see their guy win. This fight's going to be hell on earth for the first few rounds. Who has the biggest upset in boxing history? What were they watching now, that fight? We all know if you switch commentary off and watch a fight, sometimes you get a different fight. Madonna won. I'm just saying. Madonna did not <laughs> I'm just beat saying, Floyd Mayweather. I'm just saying it could have gone it could have gone either way. That's no what I'm saying. Wait. Mouthpiece. The home of unfiltered boxing. Welcome back to Mouthpiece. I am Savage Dan. I'm Mars Ferron. I have no voice. Cause I've been I guess I've just I've lost it. It's gone. I've lost it. Probably because Chelsea won 6 0. Oh, God. Arsenal lost 2 0, and yeah. they're probably going to bottle the league. But we are here <laughs> to talk boxing. Yes, we are. That's Thankfully cool. for you. Yes. Um, obviously, for those who have been living under a rock, our next show is May 11th in Cardiff. Lauren Price against Jessica McCaskill. Buy tickets and be there. And if you're not there, make sure you're watching on Sky Sports. Uh, that is going to be. A show that does not disappoint. It never does. It's a world title fight. Um, and it will be closely followed May 24th by another world title fight for Lawrence Okoli. Now, big fight. I guess it's a week or a couple of weeks after the Cardiff show. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's, and it's one fight of ours that is on that show. Yes. Uh, we. It's not an entire boxer show in Poland. It is just Lawrence Okoli. It is yeah. quite... Lonely. It's an away day. It's an away day. It's big a away full day. blown away day, and you don't get to bring all of your team. Yeah, you don't bring all your fans. But the the notable thing about this fight is the fact that it is taking part at Bantam, not Bantam. Wait, sorry, at Bridgeway. Mm -hmm. Um, it's if only Lawrence Okoli could make Bantam weight, he would be <laughs> huge, <laughs> undisputed. Huge. Yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, four yeah, fights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in four. Yeah. Oh, exactly. You collect all four belts. Boom, boom, boom. I think they'll relinquish. <laughs> the moment here is that division. Um, he is going into the bridge weight division. Now, this is a new division. Yeah. Um, and bridge weight, obviously, there, there are a lot of fighters that fall into that category, mm. which is between 200 pounds and 20, uh, 224 pounds. That's a lot of fighters. There is a lot. Uh, that are not quite small enough for cruiserweight. But are not quite big, big enough, enough to be in there with the heavyweights and that. The, the big heavyweights, mm. uh, such as a Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a huge difference between somebody who's 210 pounds, like a David Hay might have been getting into ring at certain times, yeah. and a 290 pound Zang. Zang, yeah, it's great. Just qu just quickly touching on on the weights divisions. What what do you think about like them adding like new weights and just accommodating for different boxes and weights and that? Do you I, think I think new weights are never, are never. Welcomed with open arms. Never. Never. No. I, I go back to the weight, uh, the eight weight era. Originally, there were only eight weight divisions. Yeah. They were flyweight, bantamweight, featherweight, lightweight, welterweight, middleweight, middleweight. light heavyweight, and heavyweight. heavyweight. Okay. Um, I think now we have cruiser sixteen or something like that. Yeah, super middle. Um, so there, there, <laughs> there, are, there are obviously you know where yeah. we had just welterweight, we now obviously have light welterweight and and super water weight or whatever it is and it's said differently in whether you're from america or you're from the uk okay. but there are loads of weight divisions now yeah but like you just mentioned like the, the original eight there wasn't a cruiserweight there at yep. one point and that that now is one of the most established weights in boxing yes so who knows 10 15 exactly years, even it, probably before that it's five a, years it's a rocky first couple of yeah, years yeah, i guess it will for, be there, for bridge weight, be but somebody has to to establish themselves at that weight, weight. yeah, hundred yeah, percent. For people to maybe take that weight seriously, and Lawrence O'Coley's obviously looked at the opportunities at hand. He's like, "That's a world title," mm. and not every world title was there at the moment. It is just the WBA and the WBO. So there's only two, two belts there. Not the WBO. It is the WBC mm. and the WBA. So there's only two, two organizations. Because they've gone there. Yes. Okay. Do you think the other two will go there eventually? I think eventually. Eventually. Um, when there's more, I think yeah. when there's more boxers and there's more fighters in that weight. If it's like Look, you said, sometimes it's there is the need for a weight division. Now, people will argue that maybe you don't need anything between 135 and 147. But nah, we have yeah, got yeah, something yeah. in between there. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got one, super welterweight. We've got super welterweight that yeah, sits in between at 140. So, which, is, which is cool though. 
Yeah, but that's a ten, ki- ten kilos. That's a small amount of weight. Yeah. Whereas when you look at what is between uh, cruiser and heavyweight, heavyweight and uh, oh, cruiser weight and heavyweight, heavyweight yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, it's which a big is jump. an unlimited weight division. Yeah, yeah, it's a big jump. We're talking. You're getting in the ring with not a three kilogram advantage. You can have twenty kgs on you. Thirty kilogram advantage. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's I do bit. understand the need for a bridge weight. Mm. Um, I, I, I would have imagined if they were going to introduce another one that they would probably put one in between light heavyweight and cruiserweight because that is a 10 kg jump. Yeah, yeah and that's a big jump. That's a big Huge. difference in between those two weights. Huge. Um, and a lot of people get stuck in between those weights and your performance will be effective. Yeah. Uh, affected regardless. So maybe it's, that's what's next oh. for the WBC. <laughs> maybe that's what's next. What do you think they'll call it? Um, that's, that's the thing. Well, I've just come up with it. So it's the Dan weight. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Dan Dan Wait. Dan Dan Wait. Dan Dan Wait. Oh, um, but we talked about it. We touched on it last week. Akoli going in there against Lucas Rosansky. Yeah. Um, and I guess the main thing here is winning and not letting it go to the judges. Nah, nah, nah. You don't want to do that. Obviously, I think he wants to get it done in the distance. He has to try to get it done in the distance. He looks focused. He looks very really focused. Hold on. One second, my phone. Right, that's just the message I was hoping for. Is it? We will be joined by Lawrence Acoli very, very shortly. But you're gonna have to jump out for him. Okay. That's it, yeah, that's it. That's all I want to say. Sorry, you're welcome and sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Lawrence, hi. Um, Yeah, I think he has to win well. Yeah, he he definitely has to win well. Especially like, obviously he, this is like we just t- touched on. This is a new weight. So obviously he wants to show the world this is a new weight and the new champion of this weight. Obviously yeah. he's going for that beautiful belt behind you, the WBC. Um, I think he'll get it done within within the distance, man. And obviously there's going to be other fighters, like we said, yeah. probably in the cruiserweight, probably saying, yo, I want to go up and try challenging for that belt. What about heavyweights potentially coming down? Coming down, definitely, because obviously if, if certain heavyweights have got all the belts and they're they don't feel like they're strong enough within their self to get those belts off them or they feel they can cut and come down to bridge weight. I think it's good. This is a very interesting weight because there's going to be boxers who start in their career probably saying, I want to get to that weight. Now we're finding yep. boxers who's coming down yep. or going up. Yep. There's going to be brand new boxers saying, I want to go straight to bridger. And you could probably get a, a, sh- a world title uh, shot rather quickly because there, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. a deep pool of yeah, people that yeah. are in there. We've only ever had three world champions in the bridge weight division and they yeah. are Tishenko who was the WBA um, uh, Oscar Rivas and then Lucas Rosansky Oscar oh. Rivas was the first ever bridge weight champion, champion. Okay. Um, with zero defences <laughs> so this is it yeah. but Lucas Rosansky because it's such a a, 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 a not deep division mm. he's also had zero defences his first defence unfortunately for him is against Lawrence Acoli how long do you think before the bridge weight division gets full up? Not full up, just the recognition or or perhaps the respect it, it will inevitably deserve at some point. I think it's gonna it's gonna take certain, like you said, certain boxes from the heavyweight and certain boxes from the cruiserweight to go come up or go down into that division. Give and me a time. Give me give me a how long? How long uh, is this take? So what, 12, 12 months? Eighteen months? Uh, yeah, Six months? I was gonna say two years. Within two years, this this division could be stacked. Once Lawrence Okoli gets that belt, mm. does it automatically give it more clout? Yes, of course. Because Lawrence I say it, once, like it's a foregone conclusion. Right? Now nah, he's gonna win. Man. If if come on, Lawrence, man. If it's Lawrence does it, he's gonna bring this home because he's going into the belly of the beast to do he it. Is. If he does do it, does it immediately give it kind of the the springboard it needs to be able to 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 be seen to the rest of the world is it a, a kind of a, a division that needs to be taken seriously yeah of course because he was a cruiserweight champion at one point and now he's gone up he's gonna get so he'll be a two time a two a two weight world champion yeah exactly and he's he's he, people know Lawrence Acoli he's got yeah. he's got a, he's got a big name in boxing yeah. as well as outside of boxing so yeah, yeah he'll be he, he's a, he'll be a good champion obviously respectfully there's a lot of people that's not gonna know his opponent they don't have as much clout or big name as Lawrence Acoli so once he gets that that belt, which I believe that he will be, and he'll be the face of that division. I think a lot of people are going to say, you know what, I want to, I want a piece of that. I want yeah. to be in that division as well. And then eventually, the other two sanctioning bodies or organizations might come in. The IBF and was it? The, and the well, there's only one way to find out. Let's just speak to the man himself. So I'm going to swap you out, and I'm going to do it with a magic trick, and I'm going to swap in Lawrence Acoli. 
Lawrence, thanks for joining us. Um, you're in the middle of a very important camp, a change in trainers, a change in weights. Um, talk to me, why bridge weight? Um, well, several reasons. I mean, the rematch at Cruiserweight wasn't happening and making um, weight was just becoming impossible um, and then just became impossible with the time out of the ring. Um, so it was time to move up. My body's been screaming and crying for, for a while. So, you know, um, we made the move up and obviously for the last few years I've been in world title fights or just title fights in general since I think 2017 I've been in um, was it twenty early twenty eighteen till now? I've just been in you know championship fights. So I wanted to keep that same kind of energy. A lot of people will notice that you are six foot five or six and a huge frame to fit into cruiserweight. Um, probably never realized just how tough it was for you to make cruiser. And you've told me that you actually have to lose weight to make Bridger. Yeah. How did you do it? Well, Cruiser, yeah. uh, obviously I, I was doing it for a number of years, so I kind of got used to the sort of training and, and dieting that I had to do to make it, you know, really long runs, um, watch what I'm eating for weeks out, um, you know, just, yeah, just, yeah, all of that kind of stuff. Um, at the time it felt normal because I've been doing it, you know, since, you know, I was, you know, 18, 19, so it was just like, okay, this is just what, you know, boxing is and life is and um, with all the winning and stuff like that was fine. But once I got up to like, I don't know, 118, um, the time off, I was like, you know what, there's no way I'm going to bring myself <laughs> down to cruise weight ever again. So that's it. Uh, let's talk Rosansky. He's obviously a, a unbeaten world champion. Um, he's yeah. coming down from heavyweight. All his, ba all his bouts have been at heavyweight, I believe. Um, what difference does that pose? Obviously, you're coming up from cruiserweight, albeit it was hard for you to make it, but he is, I guess, a natural heavyweight. Where does the advantage lie? Uh, for, 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 for him, I mean, the advantage would be, obviously, you've been used to being in there with bigger guys, pulling, pushing, hitting them on the side of the head and the body. So probably he'd be used to a lot of um, damaging shots. Um, so... That would be, I mean, he'll probably be able to absorb a little bit more. Um, what else? And obviously just probably feeling confident going into the fight, thinking, you know, obviously I'm a cruiserweight coming up, so he'll be able to, you know, I don't know, have a power advantage or maybe like a, just a physicality advantage. So that's, you know, I think it'd be good for his mindset as well. Um, but yeah. How much do you know about him? We obviously know he got a, a very good win against Babich. Um, he beat Spilka as well. Um, and he is... Very dangerous, 14 KOs out of his 15 wins. A lot of early stoppages in there as well, but what more is there to know about Lukas Rosansky? There isn't really much um, to take other than what we see. You know, he's, you know, um, made a career of getting, you know, quick quick knockouts and loads of knockouts. And he's obviously a good puncher um, and he's good at setting up shots because anyone that gets that number of knockouts knows how to set up a knockout shot. So, He's definitely um, got some, obviously, good boxing ability, some good punching power, and um, he, he's not afraid. He commits 100% when he's throwing his shots. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's good. Obviously, it does leave him susceptible if someone's good enough to sort of um, set him up or make him sort of walk onto punches, or maybe we'll, we'll see what he's like if he's backed up. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to, you know, showcase a different kind of, bow and different kind of tactics for this one you know a lot of times you know i have all of the attributes of you know size or strength or whatever but now weight is on the other guy's side um hometown advantage on the other guy's side so i'm gonna have to show a lot of different stuff well i mean you know in 19 of my wins you know i've had to show different things in all those fights so i think it's um it's just gonna be another case of that yeah you talked about home advantage there you're no stranger to going into people's backyards to fight them but this is a different type of away day for you. This is, this is like Galatasaray away. Like this is like, we are really going in to the fire here. Um, what was your reception like when you went there the other day? Uh, it was cool. You know, obviously that's not the real reception that I'm going to get. This one was, it was like going to Mayfair. 
you know, we went, it was a nice hotel, it was, everyone was really respectful and friendly with the Polish media, but that's what it was, it was the media, it wasn't the fans, it wasn't the people who see me beat five or, you know, so, so Polish um, top fighters um, that are there hoping that, you know, this is the one that can, can finally get the job done against, against me, so, um, yeah, uh, I can't really take much from it, it was really nice, it was really civil, but that's all it was. It was it was a press conference. It's not the, you know, weigh in the fight night. You know where every, the anticipation is mm-hmm. building. Everyone's been having their drinks, and it's time for you know um, their guy to to get in there with someone who they no matter what they say or whatever. They're all going to know that I'm very dangerous, very capable, very experienced, um, and just very good, really. So it'll be good to see. Uh, whatever, whatever. Any takeaways from it? Obviously, that will. I'm guessing be the first time you would have seen him face to face, sized him up, looked in his eyes. Did you did you take anything from that? Yeah, um, not much. He, he's he's dense, so he's bigger than the average cruiserweight. He's um, he, he, he's shorter, but I think when he gets up close, he doesn't seem that short. So um, those are two main ones. I think um, you know we shook hands a couple of times, and you could feel. You know, there's sometimes you can tell when someone just got weighty sort of arms, so he had that kind of that kind of vibe. So those are the main sort of takeaways I took. Um, other than that, not really much else. Like you can't really tell. I don't speak Polish. I don't really understand what he's saying or how he's saying or whatever. So it's probably good because you just you now it's just about going and um, just boxing really. So the the main change for you this camp is that you're back from Dubai. You're mm. you're with Joe Gallagher. What yeah. has that done for you and what will that do for you come May 24th? I think uh, as much as I talk calmly about it, the night's going to be a very, very hectic night. I think that, you know, um, the whole of Poland is going to want to see their guy win. Uh, they're going to want to see me obviously um, lose emphatically like I've beaten most of the Polish guys. So I think, um, I think, the good thing about Joe is obviously he's used to that kind of trench warfare mentality and the vibe there. Where we're going there to their hometown to rip the belt and so on and so forth. So I know he's not going to get overruled by the occasion. He's going to tell me what I need to hear, when I need to hear it, how I need to hear it. And if he tells me I need to put my foot in the gas, I know that that's a man that, that he knows what he's talking about. So I think um, those are going to be helpful. And then secondly, I think... In terms of like the training, obviously the um, the sort of stuff that I've struggled with throughout my career, I think the training setup that yeah, they've got there helps with it in the sense of you know small ring, um, no like if you're going to take a backward step, it's with intent because otherwise you're back on the ropes. You know what I mean? And um, a lot of the times where there's been let's say holding, for example, uh, in my career, it's been off of certain exchanges or like off of there's certain key triggers that we've realised oh, so every time you do this, this happens and um, being in, like, as I said that kind of environment, you're constantly getting reps in that same position because I'm sparring, you know, short stocky guys, big head guards, big gloves, walking forwards so it's like, okay, well we're here now what do I do? Okay, this is what I've been doing what are my other options? So we've just been trying to get so many repetitions of the right option, uh, you're going to pop a jab you're going to step off, you're going to do it like, we've seen the stuff that I'm meant to do, we've seen it done a thousand times by a thousand great fighters. So it's just about me kind of going in there and executing it um, on the night. What's the difference in, well, I think we all know what the difference is between Manchester and Dubai. But Dubai, it, I was speaking about it last week with Miles and we know what it can be. It can be a utopia and, and maybe lure you into a bit of a, a false sense of security. Mossad won't do that. And that's going to get you ready for war. Do, do you feel... It, it's it's a weird kind of thing to say, but do you feel like you're working harder just because of where you are? Uh, yes, I think. And also, I'm doing stuff that I haven't done in my career, you know. Um, different types of training, different types of energy systems are getting used. It's just it's just different. So I'm expecting a, a different results. Hopefully, they're better. Um from what I'm seeing in, in the gym, you know, I don't know, it's a weird one, you know, because it's like, I'm always so used to being in great condition anyway, but now it's a different type of conditioning where it's like high intensity, slow down, high intensity, slow down. So we're trying to really push that because I think that this fight, 
no matter what I say and what I think, if I jab him, he'll slow down. No, I think that this fight's going to be hell on earth for the first few rounds. Um, we've seen what this guy does. He goes out, starts fast, throws bombs in there. Um, he believes in himself. So unless I catch him with something crazy early to slow him down, it's just going to be where it is um, a high, high intensity, high action sort of fight. And then I think that obviously down the stretch, that's where I really get get to him. But um, I need to just, I need to earn the right. You know, if I don't box at a high tempo, I could get overwhelmed. You know, um, I doubt it. But you know, those are the those are the yeah. possibilities if you're not careful. You know, so I have to I have to be ready to kind of go there and you know hold it there. And then I think he'll he'll break down way before I do. As far as your plans for the future, um, Bridge awaits a new division. No one, it hasn't been around long enough for people to, to be bridge weight champions and be known as that. Do you stick at bridge weight? Is this a, a stopgap on the way to heavyweight? What do you think happens? It depends, you know, I, I think it's, it'll be a little bit naive of me to kind of look past this fight, especially where the guy's got such a good sort of um, record. Um, but I think, you know, optimistically speaking, you know, We'll see how I feel at the new weight. Um, do I still feel slightly drained? Do I not? Do you know what I mean? Those are the kind of things that I'll, I'll just be honest with myself after the win and go from there. So um, I think as of right now, you know, it's a new weight class. I enjoy being a world champion. You know, I enjoy being cruiserweight world champion and I'm sure I'll enjoy being a bridgeweight world champion. So I probably will stick around at that until the heavyweight division becomes a little bit more free mm -hmm. and and then certain fights are more possible. I don't think a fight with me and Anthony, oh no, no he's not world champion anymore, but Uzek or Tyson Fury or any or any of the guys that could be heavyweight world champion over the next, you know, six, 12 months are, are really possible, if I'm honest. Um, so it's after that, Klopp's kind of just said, all right, we're done or relinquish belts. Then it becomes a really exciting time to be a heavyweight with options to, that I win against uh, Rosansky, I'll be two weight world champion, cruiserweight, bridgeweight, and then if I'm able to go in and get a third one, then no matter what you know, um, anyone says or whatever, my accolades will obviously speak for themselves. Yeah. British, Commonwealth, European, world cruiser, world bridger, world heavyweight. So I think that um, in this last little chapter, I think I can get it done. We've seen Joe Gallagher say, you know, get in there, don't mess about, get the win, and get on the plane straight back home. In your mind, what is the ideal performance for you? The ideal performance would be a first round KO, I think. Um, I think it would be like a good sort of counter shot. He throws a, like a, a jab and I throw a right hand over and then it hurts him and then I just take him out there. Or like maybe like a good body shot, like maybe like a, like, oh, mm, like, yeah, like he kind of tucks up and I just throw like a couple jabs slinging a couple to the body and then he goes down. Anything that's like a quick stoppage would be the best because it's half head. We built this all up. Yeah. He's so dangerous for the first four and then I stop him within the first, you know, couple rounds or round. That would be ideal. But um, you know, it's possible though to be fair. Um it really is possible. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Well thank you for giving me your time. Before we go, I do have a question for you. Um I had a quite an, an unpopular boxing opinion the other day and it just got me thinking that everyone must have one. Do you have an unpopular boxing opinion about anything or anyone? Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe Bridgeweight is over the next 12 months will be better than it. Cruiserweight. Do you know what? Just before we went into this section with you, I said to Miles, I've just got a feeling that next 12 to 18 months, the Bridgeweight division might be, it could be the division. I didn't say it quite like yeah. that with that much confidence, but now that yeah. you've said it, <laughs> it it's true. Yeah, you know, we'll every, every division um, before it was made needed somebody to go there and mm. be the first, the Ronaldo to go to the Saudi league. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then everyone else follows. Um, so I make yeah, you I mean, right. Same in right. Britain now. Yeah, same in Britain now. You know, I had to be the one to go get the British, Commonwealth, European and world. And then now, you know, women I mean, with Chris beating me and, you know, React Paul, mandatory, they all kind of believe they could get to the top of the mountain. 
So, you know, same with um, Bridgeweight. I think, you know, a lot of a lot of cruiserweights will make their way up. And I think there will be some heavyweights that say, you know what, I can't get nothing up here. Let me let me see if I can make the 100 or 225 pounds and then we'll, we'll see. Just touching on it there before you go, um, Chris Billen-Smith and Riyadpur look like they are set to go. Um, how do you see that fight playing out? Uh, I mean, I think um, you should make Chris the favourite. However, I think with the, his last few fights, I think it might be tough to maintain that kind of um, level in the sense of obviously me and him had a, a hard physical fight anyway, you know, where he got cuts and so on and so forth and he really brought a lot out of himself. And then same again with Masternak, who seemed like he was winning the fight quite comfortably until, you know, Chris landed those great body shots and sort of stopped him. Um, on his stall or whatever. So I think if if Chris is able to go to the well and sort of, you know, bring out that kind of um, performance that he did against myself, he, he'll be able to beat Rappor. Um If not, then, you know, Rappor's punch power might kind of show because um, although I didn't get to show it, I think that, you know, Chris Chris has been caught. He gets caught a bit too... too... Then again, actually, against Rappor, I think he'll be a little bit more wary. So I don't know. I think Chris should win the fight, but uh, it's one of those 50-50 ones. Interesting. Interested in the winner at Bridgeweight, potentially? Yeah, I think they'll definitely be interested unless they want to box um, Jai or Pattaya, um, which, I mean, we know Reactor didn't want to. So I think that they would probably prefer to, you know, come up and have an opportunity to be two-weight world champion. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. There we have it. Uh, Lawrence, thank you for joining me. I will hopefully at some point see you soon. I'll make sure I'm yep. in Poland as well. Good luck for camp. Um, and we'll see you soon. Yes. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. Man. No Thank worries, you. bro. Come on, man. Thank you. And just like that, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Um, How do you do it, then? He's speaking well. Yeah. He looks focused. He wants to get it done in the, in the distance. I, I, I think we spoke about the difference between Dubai and and Manchester and he looks like he's been to Manchester he's, he's, he's in that frame of mind now <laughs> yeah only thing that can stop him is probably a robbery or upset is a robbery so let's talk robberies oh, let's go this is a sport that is um always coming under scrutiny for robberies. bad decisions yeah, aka robberies mm -hmm. aka whatever it is controversial decisions um when you think of a controversial boxing decision What's the first couple that come to mind? Um, Triple G and Canelo, number one. Number one? Number one. I seem to remember you at the time mm. thinking Triple, uh, Canelo, Canelo won. Canelo won it. it, oh, so it why oh, is it oh, oh. now controversial? I've, 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 I've watched it back. I've watched it back. That's I actually, I actually watched the trilogy back three, four weeks ago. I watched the first two. I haven't watched the trilogy. And it was, even, even I was watching at the time, it did seem like Triple G did get the best of him at the time. It did. But obviously, it's Canelo being Canelo and him being the face of boxing, I don't think they really want is to that, is that re Is that what it is? That's the, what the, it was. It's right? the politics, right? It was the politics. A lot of people speak politics. about the politics. But do you know what? Having sat ringside and watched a couple of fights, sometimes I'm getting them wrong or different to what the rest of the world is seeing them mm. on a screen. Mm. Maybe commentaries having a difference, et cetera, et cetera. We all know if you switch commentary off and watch a fight, Sometimes you get a different fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying all robberies are robberies because some are just close fights, but there are some that everybody seems in unison with. So for example, um, Josh Taylor, Jack Catterall. That, that, Most people yes. who Let's watched talk that on fight it. Let's talk on it. saw a Jack Catterall win, except the three people that matter. Or <laughs> the, the three, yes. This is the thing, you know? Um, what, what were they watching now that fight? Because obviously, Dan, like even even if even if you're not a boxing connoisseur, like, I watched you know, it back or a fan. It was closer than I had it at the time, but it was still a Jack Carroll win for me. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. But like I said, if it, and in this sport, one sec, Dan, in this Go sport on. of boxing, which I don't, which I don't, I've said it here. I've sat here and said that if you want to take the belt of of the champion, you got to make it a convincing victory. Mm -hmm. You got to make it very convincing. You got to get him out of there. And I honestly believed, and most people do, not even just, just the hardcore boxing fans, but just the, 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 the people that just watch boxing, who just the common watchers, yeah? Everyone was saying that Carol won that fight. And Taylor, I don't, even, it felt like even when Taylor 
they, they put Taylor's hand up, it felt like, mm, do you really? It was like he was kind of embarrassed to some degree. Like, okay, I got away with it. Yeah. I got away with it. Carol, he see. won that fight. Let's see. That's why he's in such high demand. There are others that I was even more surprised at. So when Tim, do you know what? Matt, here's where your argument goes down the drain about perhaps being the face of boxing and therefore you are getting the political decisions. Oh yeah, he was. Canelo's, for that. Manny Pacquiao, one of boxing's favorite people. Yes, we love him. Did not lose that fight to Tim Bradley. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he did. He did. But maybe, oh, yeah, you've kind of put, yeah, you've kind of, yeah, there you go. Argument, yeah. However, I guess it's fair because Manny Pacquiao, in my opinion, didn't win any fights against Marquez. No, he did. Oh, not one. Not one. All four. Well, he lost the one, the last one decisively. The first yeah, yeah, one yeah. Was the first, draw. yeah, yeah. The first one was I a draw. I think number three was the biggest robbery. For who? For Marquez? Yes. No number way. Number three, I think, no he, I think he dominated that. No, you need to watch that fight back. He won number three. This is why they got number four. It wasn't even a robbery. So you say they... Of course that was a robbery. It wasn't a robbery. There is no way Manny Pacquiao beat Marquez in the third fight. There is no way. There is no way. There is no way. Uh, so for me, that's one, of, that's one of the worst decisions I've seen. So was it a robbery or was it an upset? It was a robbery. That wasn't an upset. That was a big robbery. robbery. You got robbed. That was a rubber. Oh, I don't know about that one, man. Let's talk upsets then. I don't know about that one. All right, let's talk upsets. What's What's the biggest upset you've seen? Oh, there's a lot. The well, one that comes to mind of, of recent note is obviously Joshua and Ruiz. That was okay. one of the biggest yeah, yeah. upsets ever. Yeah. You was there live. I was there. I remember I, mem- I messaged um, you then. I said, how's it looking? He was like, it's not looking good. It wasn't looking good. And I was upset because we thought it was a full-blown conclusion. He was meant to fight Big Baby at the time, yeah. Miller. And we said, okay, who's this guy? Nobody really knows him. I knew. No, but I'm just saying. And he's just come off a very good win against Washington. I yes, think. He did. he's used to fighting big boys. He's fit. He fight. Look, it, no, looking but back, just... it wasn't the. It's not the hugest upset yeah. because he's an accomplished boxer. Yeah. Um, for me. But it was a big one for the for the general yeah. consensus because a lot of people wouldn't know who Ruiz is. The biggest one, in I'm gonna guess in history, the biggest upset has to be. Buster Douglas. Douglas. Yeah, and Mike Tyson. That was insane. Yeah. But we still talk about him now. But there's others. Corey Sanders, who when he beat Vladimir Klitschko. Oh, yes. Damn. Um, yeah, that was a big that There, was a big there are huge upsets. Upsets are a part of this game. Um, as are robberies, unfortunately, or controversial decisions. Controversial decisions. Um, there's, yeah. there's quite a few that we're missing, though. Obviously, the, in the comments, you guys can tell us who you think has been yeah. robbed. Who do you think is... The biggest upset. The, who has the biggest upset in boxing history? Mm. Good question. It's a yeah, good it's question. A I'll question. let you guys answer. Uh, who has been on the, the nice side of a controversial decision? Let us know that as well. Um, it's been quite a long episode because I've sat here with Miles. I've but obviously done my magic trick. I've got rid of Miles. I've brought in Lawrence Acoli. I just want to quickly you guys, say, go on. I know that Floyd Mayweather is your guy, but Madonna won. I'm just saying. Madonna did not <laughs> I'm just beat saying, Floyd Mayweather. I'm just saying it could have go, it could have gone either way. That's no what I'm saying. No way. Uh, the, the first one. No, it was close. Way. That's what I'm saying. It was close it was enough. Close. He, it was close. he won some rounds. Yeah, it was close. And this is the and this is why <laughs> we have upsets and robberies like, and all of that because it was an upset. It could have could have gone either way. Boxing is such a subjective sport, and what I see might not be the same as what Miles sees and what you see at home. So here we go. There we have it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it has been an honor yet again. Uh, Stay locked in. Next week, we will be back, hopefully, with another guest. Say goodbye, Miles. Goodbye, peeps.